a 4.8-ton tank in Corten steel. One of the most unusual creations from Rilmac Fabrication. It's the centerpiece of a new memorial celebrating a world first 100 years ago in Rilmac's home city of Lincoln. The invention and manufacture of the world's first fighting tanks. Rilmac's skilled welders and fabricators create complex structures for export all over the world. But this job is closer to home. It's bound for a roundabout only half a mile away, but also Rulmac's team are acutely aware of their city's engineering heritage and the tradition they represent. Many come from local engineering families who've contributed to various companies down the decades. They were commissioned to build the replica tank and create carbon steel models of local engineering heroes who, during the First World War, invented and built the first tanks. Until now, there'd been no memorial to these innovators. Thanks to Rilmac and fundraising volunteers, two pioneers from the old William Foster Company, managing director William Tritton and his chief draftsman William Rigby, are now represented, one and a half times life-size, on one of the city's busiest roundabouts, close to where Foster's once stood. Depicted with them is Major Walter Wilson, a brilliant engineer who'd been seconded to work with Tritton by the Land Ships Committee of the Admiralty in London. Working closely with the Lincoln Tank Memorial fundraising group, Rilmac built the memorial at their Beaver Street plant, itself only a few hundred yards from where Foster's strove so hard between 1915 and 1918. The wish of the tank memorial group was for a two-dimensional facade, showing a Mark I tank under construction and decorated with figures from all aspects of the workforce. Two weeks before the official unveiling, the tank was craned with loving care through Rilmac's plant for shot blasting. It was thought best to fit one of the figures on site, a munitionette to represent the women who played vital roles in tank manufacture after some of the men were called up to fight. One of the duties of the munitionettes was to paint the inside of the tanks white to help the first ever tank crews. Many of the Rulmac team who'd made the memorial went on site to bolt down the tank and fix the figures liaising with a groundworks and bricklaying team from Wilmot Dixon, who had created the plinth and the concrete base. The figures were protected under polythene and then polished to be ready for the official unveiling ceremony. 36 hours before the unveiling, Rulmac were invited to a commemorative dinner at the White Hart Hotel. It was in the so-called tank room here that Tritton, Wilson and Rigby carried out their inventive work, away from the hustle and bustle of the factory downhill. Their endeavours were remembered at this centenary dinner organised by the Lincolnshire Seafarers Association. The unveiling ceremony featured a spitfire from the Battle of Britain Memorial Squadron, flying over in tribute. With Rilmac's team looking on, the ribbon was cut by Major Gareth Morris of the Royal Tank Regiment, who is Rigby's great-grandson. Laverne Tritton from Canada, a distant relative of Sir William. Seen here on the right with them, Christopher Wilson, grandson of Walter Wilson. And by a local lady, Irene Crosby, whose mother, Florence Bonnet, was one of the munitionettes.